Welcome to the beer tier. <laughs> hey. So this is a new segment for um, our audience. Something we've been running for a wee while behind the scenes on our Patreon. Uh, we offer a few different tiers. If anybody's interested at all in supporting the channel, we offer a few different tiers. So you can pay just a dollar a month to be involved um, and you get a few things for that. But ultimately there's a few different tiers that you can go through. That's not a tier, that's my beer. <laughs> <laughs> this specific one is called the beer tier. The beer tier, yeah. So what happens is um, we ask for questions. Anybody who's on the beer tier can ask us very specific questions and we will grab ourselves a pint and we will answer you directly. A bespoke question answered in its very own video that we publish. So generally we, add, we ask the question towards the end of the month and we do the video again to start of the next month. So this is going to be the beer tier question that came at the end of March. Yes. So this one is from Joe. Our main man Joe. Asks us questions every month. So Joe's been asking us a bunch of questions every month that you've never seen because we always keep it on Patreon. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be new for you. Yeah. So Joe's question is, he keeps getting thrown off by hospital stays the 6th and 29th. I have enough health issues, but this episode was from a reaction to a new diabetic drug. Um, they did say it is a side effect. Pancreatitis is a big deal. Now he's asking your thoughts on pharmaceuticals, side effects versus benefits. Do you see the difference in healthcare between our countries? So that, that's an awesome question. It's an awesome question. It's a bit more of a conversational question rather than a definitive answer. Yeah. Because ultimately he's asking for our opinion and um, is there a difference between the UK and the US? So addressing the things with side effects one on. Now remember, we are not recommending you give up any medication. This is purely our opinion and our, based on our experiences. So um, with all things pharmaceutical beta or any sort of treatment in general, do your homework extensively, ask the experts, um, and make your own informed choices. We are not saying give up medication if that's the impression you get. Yes, always speak to your doctor or your physician um, about any sort of condition and medication that you are taking. If there is alternatives, then you can research it yourself. Please do not take anything we say um, for gospel. So the biggest problem I see with a lot of these drugs out there is that the side effects are huge. And sometimes you end up taking a drug just because of the side effects of another drug. Which, I mean, you see that actually in the, the world of depressants or antidepressants. They take an antidepressant and unfortunately it um, makes them sleepy. So then they take another drug that counteracts the sleepy side effect of the first drug. But then this has a depressive effect. So then they take a third drug. <laughs> and they get an antidepressant for the yeah, I mean, side effects of the depressant Don't get me wrong, antidepressant um, medication is very, very complicated. But when you start looking at these lists of side effects, it gives you a headache just going... Wow. Now, yeah. true, the side effects don't always hit everybody the same, but when you have a list of the length of your arm of possible and potential side yeah. effects, then you've got to start asking yourself, is it worth taking this? My, I think my main problem with um, pharmaceutical industry, um, doctors and all, is their eagerness to prescribe drugs. I mean, some drugs absolutely 100% essential, um, especially for something like type 1 diabetes. People need insulin. Plain and simple, your, your pancreas does not produce insulin, therefore you have to inject it, okay? We cannot argue with that. But type 2 diabetes, the number of people who go to the doctor and they say, right, I've got type 2 diabetes, it's so common, especially in the US and the UK. Type 2 diabetes, sorry, those dogs are fighting and they're kind of... They're going to town or <laughs> They're going at it. Type 2 diabetes and the, the doctor's eagerness to prescribe medication, say, oh, you're diabetic now, you need this medication. Now, type 2 diabetes is 100% can, can be controlled by your lifestyle, your diet, your exercise, and everything else that goes along with it. And um, the medication can help, but what you can often do is just mask a problem. If you're eating too much carbohydrate and not exercising, which is normally the cause of type 2 diabetes, then by you taking that medication, you're just masking a problem. It's almost like to say, your doctor saying, it's okay to keep eating all that sugar and it's okay not to exercise. You can just take these pills and voila, you're, you're, you're absolutely fine. You can stay healthy and still have that lifestyle. Rather than being absolutely brutally honest with people and saying, oh, actually, 
you need to get some exercise, you need to focus on getting some healthy fats in, increase your fiber intake and get some lean protein. You know, make sure you're getting some regular, intense, progressive exercise. You know, all these little things, but because the doctor doesn't, can't really prescribe that as such, it's easier, it's, the, it's a fail safe just to say, take these pills. Now, you've got to ask yourself, because a lot of people trust their doctor hand over hand. Now, I'm not saying doctors are dishonest, far from it. But you say, well, why would my doctor prescribe me something if it wasn't good for me? But you've got to forget that, or you, you can't forget that both in the US and in the UK, the pharmaceutical industry is worth trillions. Now, in the UK, it works slightly differently. In the UK, doctors have to prescribe X amount of medication so they get their, their funding and all this kind of thing. In the US, it's, it's very much privatised. Therefore, the more medication they prescribe or sell, the more money that's made. And these pharmaceutical companies actually place a lot of pressure and targets onto yeah. doctors' practices. Like, we want you to pump this drug out there and bang, bang, bang. And then it can be a little bit irresponsible. Whenever there's profit involved, there's always an element of... Um, a slight bit of dishonesty in a lot of cases. It's, I think in our country it's more the whole antibiotic craze. Now, antibiotics have been over-prescribed to people that didn't necessarily need them to the point now that people are becoming re resistant, <laughs> resistant yeah. which is a problem in itself. Now, if there hadn't been so much money involved in that process a long time ago, we might not be in the same mess we're in now in terms of the, the resistance. Because yeah. that further down the line, that's going to cause real problems. The other thing is, um, I've, I've got a friend, it's a, actually a friend of a friend, uh, Malky. I, um, I actually don't know what his real name is. That's really rude of me. Uh, Malky, anyway. So he was actually a GP, he was a doctor. And uh, I'll ca I was catching up with my friends and he was there again. I was, uh, so I was asking how things were going. And he said that he's left the, the, the doctor's practice. And I think at the time, he decided to do some labouring work for his bricky friend. And I was like, you're labouring, but you're, you're a doctor, like, what are you doing? You spent years and years and years studying at university and going through all these different um, processes. And he says, I, got, I became a doctor because I wanted to make people healthier, I wanted to help people. And he says, we had all these targets for um, heart medication, for blood pressure medication. Mm. And um, basically, this pharmaceutical companies came in and said, right, the statistics show that I can't remember the, the percentages, but say, say it was 60% um, of the UK have high blood pressure. And at the moment, we're only prescribing medication to 40%. Therefore, where is that other 20%? It's your job as doctors to find that other 20% who've got high blood pressure. So then people were coming in with like, say, a sore throat and saying, oh, well, he said, I just need to check your blood pressure while you're here. And they're like, but I've just got a sore throat. I know, but we'll check your blood pressure. Oh, actually, your blood pressure is just a little bit above normal. You need this medication. And then people were leaving thinking they were going to have a heart attack because their blood pressure was going to be slightly above normal. Um, and blood pressure can vary so much. And it's really actually irresponsible and immoral of these pharmaceutical companies to, to force their medication on healthy people. The frustrations I have as well is out there. Now, again, we're not stressing that you stop taking your medication far from it because there's lots of medications out there that are actually very good um, and very little side effects. Now, I'm a big believer where possible in sort of herbal remedies where you know where you can. Now, a common virus you get is basically the herpes virus, but I first contracted the shingles, which is ultimately the same virus, right? So I had the chicken pox and later in life got the shingles, which was blooming sore. And when I did my research, I realised that apparently if you take L-lysine, which is amino acid, a herbal supplement, you know, it was far better than all these expensive um, medication that you get prescribed by the doctors or whatnot. So I thought, no, that can't be true, surely not. So anyway, took the tablets, you could buy them in your local health shop, went away very, very quickly. And I did, obviously, from my research, I realised that what, how it works is it stops the virus from multiplying. So it doesn't necessarily get rid of it, your own body then fights it off. But the medication to buy in the shops for all these, you know, creams, cold sore creams or vice versa, all the things you put on it, is really, really expensive. And I was like, oh my goodness, like that's all money. They want you because they know that things like cold sores appear normally or the shingles or if you've been a naughty boy um, with various partners, you might have <laughs> <laughs> a different version of the same virus. Cold sores on your penis. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Um, so... You know, and they'll they'll charge you X, Y, and Z when really you could have went to the health store and got this quick and easy fix. 
and it just baffles me because it all comes down to profit. So in some cases, you know, there's a bunch of guys out there who are rewinding this right now. Like, what, what, what did they say? What did they say? L Y Z. It only stops it multiplying. Therefore, the minute you feel, if, if, well, that was in case of my shingles or a cold sore, if you feel the tingling starting, um, not that I get cold sores, but if you feel the tingling start, you start taking it, and it'll go away very, very quickly, and your own body will fight it off. But there are a lot of herbal remedies out there, and you get these sort of um, what they call white witches out there. Now they go a bit, I wouldn't say they go a bit too far, but they believe in all, everything herbal or everything that grows in the land. But they do see an interesting point. The side effects to these herbal remedies is very, very little. Yep. But the side effects of these pharmaceutical much, drugs are much bigger. <laughs> huge. Yeah. So it's what we're trying to say here is do your research, really do your homework, don't take one person's answer for it find out online order manual do do whatever you have to do i think the best advice that we can give you is if you've got any sort of condition anything at all from um, heart disease to type 2 diabetes um, lung conditions all sorts of different things first look at your environment your lifestyle your daily habits and ask yourself what have i got direct control over what can i change are you just covering things up with medication and just accepting your that's your life and not change it what's now we got hi drop hi come here drop it's our rat thing yeah, i thought so yeah yeah Tell you leave that um be good for you, Darren. so look yeah look at your lifestyle and ask yourself can i change anything drop i don't want to be chewing that leave it you carry on chatting Sorry, Nala has uh, decided to, to pick up some rat poison, which is not or great. mouse or whatever, or whatever it is. Whatever it is. Um, yeah, first of all, if you're taking medication for absolutely anything, look at your life and say, can I change something? Can I make my life better first? Do I actually need all of this medication? Now, we're not uh, suggesting that you should stop taking medication, but... If you can change things to do with your lifestyle, if you can get some regular exercise, if you can swap to organic food, if you can just get some more vegetables, more fiber, more healthy fats, more lean protein. There's an easier solution than... Like, yeah, sometimes you're just being lazy. And I mean that in the nicest possible way because it's human nature. I'm not saying you're lazy and you're, you're disgraceful. I'm saying it's human nature to be lazy. This is why we invent things like cars and remote controls and everything else because we're lazy um, as a species. In fact, every species on the planet is inherently lazy. It's a way of saving energy. But if we can avoid doing the hard things, then it's, it just makes more sense to our subconscious. But this is why taking a pill for, I mean, it, it keeps coming out. You see the newspapers, like, we've finally got a pill for obesity. And like, do you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you just don't. The other thing though, if you are on any sort of, you're, you're put on any sort of medication, you want to go in with the mindset to get on and get off. Now, perfect example was another um, YouTuber for a while. He did a gaming channel. His name was Deltius Gaming, I think he was. Um, now, he was a fantastic guy. He was into his games, and he was ex-army. Now, he hurt his back when he was in the army, and he was prescribed tramadol. Now, at the time, he didn't realise they were so addictive. So he'd been on tramadol. He'd come out of the army, and because of his back, he just continued to take them. And you know, his back would flare up again if he forgot to take them. So he just continued to take it for years. And it wasn't until he did his research he realised wow the side effects of this is bad so I remember he did a video on his channel he says look I'm going to have to take three or four weeks off because I'm going to have to wean myself off he's going to have to go through what do they call it when they come off the like a rehab process like, yeah that, exactly or... because he was like I just did not know when I was prescribed these that one they were addictive and two they were so damaging to his body and he eventually came off them and he worked through it but man that must have been tough and that's just because he didn't know because when they're prescribed it was just a lack of knowledge so if you are if, or if you do have to take medication and it's not a permanent fix you want to look to get on and get off as quickly as possible so anyway we're going to finish these beers in peace so this this beer's to joe to joe to joe to joe thanks for your if you've got any questions that you want answered go into patreon.com forward slash the kilted coaches join the beer tier ask us your questions and we'll make a video specifically for you for you let's launch